monkeys definitely feed off of your feelings. They know when you're feeling down or when you're feeling funny. It's kind of an urban legend that people out there training monkeys to help people with disabilities. But that really happens. I had my monkey, Casey, for 10 years. In 2005, I, I was in a car accident. I injured C1, C2, the spinal cord with a brain injury. I couldn't move really anything at all. I couldn't talk. You know, I've come a long way. Our goal is to train and place capuchin monkeys with people living with mobility impairments. The program got its start really as an experiment to say, we can train a dog to help somebody who has visual impairment, perhaps we can train a primate to be the hands for somebody who has had a spinal cord injury. We provide our monkeys at no charge to our recipients. All of our monkeys are born into our program. Typically a monkey will spend about three to five years at the monkey college learning tasks, whether that's fetching a phone or remote control off the floor. Helping somebody get something to drink. Even something as complicated as flipping the pages of a book. And the monkeys do really act as hands and give them that level of independence back. You can imagine having a spinal cord injury and all of a sudden you have a monkey that's sitting on your shoulder and you can finally feel that touch. To have that, that monkey there is an incredible bonding experience. When I couldn't move, Casey did a lot for me. Casey, fresh. Now it's a lot of emotional support. It's a lot of uh, companionship. Casey is part of my family. You know, this is a five pound animal that is extraordinarily helpful and brings joy to my life. Chimp Haven is a retirement facility. This is their forever home. This is where they come to explore and, and live like chimpanzees. In June 2013, the director of the National Institutes of Health made an announcement that virtually all of the chimpanzees would be retired from research. We have close to 200 chimpanzees here now. Around half of our colony are veterans of research that was focused on a cure for HIV AIDS as well as hepatitis C. And so as a result of that, those chimpanzees had to be infected with those viruses. Good morning, Gina. Genetically, I'd say we're about 98% identical uh, to a chimpanzee. And then as you can imagine, that's why they were ideal subjects in test studies, because they want to learn more about how they can benefit humans. So I would definitely say that the human to chimp relationship is one that is ever evolving. Give me that hand, give me your hand. Good girl. They're a lot like us in our family dynamics. You see siblings, they're interacting, they're playing with one another. Every relationship is different. It's just like us with humans. Certain individuals you'll have really close, intimate relationships with, some not so much. We also have seen some behavioral changes where a chimpanzee might appear to be overly timid and you know see a, a change in that over time. We might see that a chimpanzee is a lot more interested in exploring the five and a half acre habitat. Um, and this might have been the first opportunity that they had to do that. I think it's such a great benefit to know that this is where they'll live out the rest of their lives. And to know that despite whatever their past may be, we are at least giving them the opportunity to live out a time of retirement where they're with other chimps, where they're able to exhibit these species typical behaviors, and they're just able to be chimps and know that, you know what, life is good. <laughs>